Hello and welcome to the All Night Gamers podcast. This week, I'm joined by the usual crew, Alex, Cameron, and Cooper. Hey. Hello. Hello. And we've got a whole mix of random stuff to talk about this week because there's not really a lot of big news. So we're going to run through a whole bunch of small stuff, and I'm just not going to waste any time by running through it all because I feel like it would take 30 minutes. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this random episode. We'll start today with uh, some new information on Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity that was um, announced a couple weeks ago coming out in November. Uh, it was shown off at the Tokyo Game Show, right? Yep. And uh, received a new trailer, uh, some gameplay footage, and a little bit of new information. So apparently if you have Breath of the Wild save data on your switch you will receive a training sword that you can use in the game which just looks like a crappy wooden sword of some kind um so this exactly out of breath of the wild yeah um and it it goes along with the uh soup ladle and pot lid that you can get if you pre-order the game digitally yeah Um, but that stuff should all well, they say we might release it as DLC. They'll probably release it for everyone else. That's what they did for the original Hyrule Warriors with the costumes that were split across three stores. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised that everyone that's interested in this game has Breath of the Wild save data. I'm yeah. talking about the pot lid and ladle. Oh. Just... What do you mean across several stores? So, like, well, the pot lid and ladle, I'm talking about digitally. I'm pretty sure that's the one that's going to cause most people problems because, like, half be- half of people buy physical games still. Yeah, including us. Yeah. <laughs> um, but with the original Hyrule Warriors on the Wii U, Link's Ocarina, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword were sp- split across uh, Best Buy... Amazon and I probably don't GameStop. Yeah, it was either it was obviously either GameStop, Target, or Walmart, but I can't remember. Now, Toys R Us would have been on at that point too. Mm, no, it wasn't Toys R Us who had it. I don't think it was probably GameStop. GameStop always gets one of those digital exclusives. I, I wish they yeah. would do a thing where, like, if you buy if. If you buy the game within like a week of release, and I, if it's physical, register it. if you register it within a week of release, you would get the DLC. I hate that it has to be a pre-order bonus, digital only. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I it would. I understand pre-order, but that would fix it where it would be fair to both physical and digital owners. Yeah, because I prefer owning games physically. Or if yeah, you, I mean, or just make all the stores give you a code if you pre-order it physically. See, but stores are so bad about work that. Out. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, I look mean, at that's Target. The Target option. never gives pre-order bonuses properly. Well, that's the that's the kicker. It would be more difficult to do it that way. But if if you really want to make it a specifically pre-order bonus and not like a week of release bonus, then you'd have to do it like that for physical people. I mean, you could do like Konami did with uh, their baseball game last year and just have it in the packaging. I do want to make one small correction real quick. It wasn't just Link who had costumes. It was also Zelda and Ganon. Dorf. Yeah. And and Ooh. Impa Impa was shown off as a playable character, right? Uh, for Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, yes. Yeah. Oh, a... so you're talking about the original. Yes, yeah, for the, the DLC costumes. Right. But, well, yeah, uh, that's a good segue. Uh, Impa is a playable character in Age of Calamity. We um, now know seven of eight. The, they've hinted at an eighth character real recently. Yeah, so do, is that going to be I, in the game, or is that also possible DLC? No, Impa's playable already. No, not Impa, but the secret eighth Oh, character. I, it will be in the game, down. I assume. Yeah. yeah, like how they've described it, I assume it will be. But since they're not showing it, I assume it will be like 
maybe Ganon killing all the champions. If that they, would be it's... crazy. You know, I was. Listening... You pull... Are you good? Okay, because you Hyrule played Ganondorf Warriors. in the original of uh, Hyrule Warriors. Yes, and after Hyrule you beat Warriors the main campaign villains, right? Like, yeah, but you didn't play their story. You a... literally played Ganondorf's story through Hyrule, uh, the original one, until it caught back up to the main campaign. Point is, they like being able. Kotek mode likes being able to use the villains as playable characters. Because when else are you going to get to play them? That's yeah, true. I was um, listening to IGN's Nintendo podcast. Shout out there, I guess. Even though, why would we shout them out? They're, they're usually like, <laughs> they the, biggest, they're like the biggest gaming <laughs> podcast there is. It's IGN. Anyway. I listen yeah, exactly. to I listen to you if you're listening, IG, and I enjoy your show. Yeah, um, shout us out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, we shouted you out. But I was I was listen- fair trade here. <laughs> I was listening to them earlier this week, and they actually talked about it would be really cool to have like an actual full on game where you play as the villain of a Mario game or a Zelda game. They said the Mario game would be a bit more challenging because it would probably be more boring. Basically, like you'd have to be a lot you more do creative. play as the villain. Oh, yeah, he just a... isn't the villain in that game. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Bowser's Inside Story. You yeah, play. They, they mentioned that too. Oh, but they're like, a, like, a, but like a classic. Yeah. Like, I think that one playing part. a Zelda game where you play as Ganondorf would be really cool. Oh, for sure. Like deep in the lore of the timeline, that would be super interesting. Um. So yeah, I, I watched the trailer. I noticed how the gameplay looks different than uh, the first one it looks a lot more breath of the wildy and i like that i'm I'm a lot more interested now that i've seen that compared to before because at first i thought it was just gonna kind of be more of the same thing but it looks like that it plays different now so i'm actually really excited now for that they've they've set it up really 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 well they from what i saw they've got multiple of links uh um, Sheikah slate abilities. I saw ice, and he had the explosive bombs. Explosive bombs. Hmm. <laughs> Ex- compared oh. to the non-explosive bombs. <laughs> yes. I mean, Zelda was, has pictures from uh, Status on the Sheikah slate. Hmm. Well, um, so yeah, uh, if you haven't seen the trailer and gameplay footage of that, you should definitely go check it out. It looks really, really good. That's out uh, November something. Have they given an actual release date of that? Am I just just brain farting right now? Hold on. Um, Well, yeah, it comes out November. November 20th. 20th. Okay, yeah, so uh, it comes out November 20th. Uh, if you don't collect physical stuff or to care about it, definitely get the digital version of this so you can get the cool uh, DLC for well, free. If you plan to get it digitally, might as well pre-order it at least a day before so you get the mm-hmm. label. Yeah. Um, it's you know it's bound to be good. The first one was good. They're they're definitely not going to go lower. Um, they know what they're doing. And Nintendo's so. got such a bigger hand in this one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so still jealous of. Japan's collector's edition. Man, ever I've been so mad ever since you showed me those. <laughs> yep. Japan, Dude, just so order from stuff. Amazon Japan. No, I want paraglider I want blanket them. and a little charm and I think an art book. Uh, I'll tell you right now, don't order from um, uh, Play Asia because they uh, bumped up the price like they did with um, Link's Awakenings uh, Europe. Uh, special oh, edition last year. Not an art book. It's an acrylic art pillate with the box art on it. Okay. All I know is that it looks really cool, and it's actually available on Amazon Japan right now. It just can't be shipped to me. Oh, big but it won't be in the English, like... right? No, it, it should be able to be in English. Nintendo doesn't treat their games like everyone else it's all the same game it just at, defaults at least to whatever generation. language you're on at least yes. this generation um 
so yeah, that's uh, that's cool stuff. We're very excited for that game. Um, move on to more Nintendo stuff. Animal Crossing Fall Update is coming out the day that this podcast episode comes out. So if you're listening to this on the uh, launch of this podcast episode, uh, oh. it'll be coming out today. Um, wow. Otherwise, it'll yes and no. It comes out today, but by technicality. It comes out uh, Tuesday night because we always get it the night that everyone else gets it, the like the morning or day of. So it because okay. that's it'll, what's happening. It'll, it'll the last be out several. when you're listening to this podcast. No yeah. Matter what. yeah, There's a lot of cool stuff coming. Uh, it includes the Halloween event stuff. There's going to be all sorts of costumes you can dress up as. You can get you can purchase candy to stock up to give to your island pals on halloween there's um bunch of new customization yeah um i i really haven't seen much personally other than the halloween stuff oh pumpkin farming of course how could i forget you can farm pumpkins that is awesome anything with farming in it i will definitely do so if nothing else i'll be farming some pumpkins but i've actually the costumes look great yes I've been talking to a friend about this. Um, my thoughts on farming is that they've had this plan the whole time. That's why you can't destroy the flowers like you used to be able to. It's set up so that the farming would just be able to, you know, when they finished the pumpkins and whatever else may come after, they can just slide it in instead of having to develop a new cycle for them. Ooh. Yeah, so it's basically taking care of flowers again, but they're pumpkins and of flowers. They're pumpkins, and they're actually worthwhile. But you don't have to just wear them on your head. You don't have to. You didn't have to tell me that it's basically growing flowers again, but pumpkins. You just had to tell me that we're growing pumpkins. I'm down for growing some pumpkins. Um, actually, I'm in. I'm. I'm still playing Stardew Valley. I'm one of those weirdos, and I'm in fall again. So I'm about to start growing some pumpkins. It's all coming together. <laughs> I'm growing pumpkins oh. in Stardew Valley. I'm finna grow pumpkins in Animal Crossing, and it's pretty much pumpkin season already. It's like mm-hmm. the infestation has come back. Spooky times. Um, it. Oh, there's also a couple of new emotes. Yeah. Along with them being accessible in the NSO app. Yeah, yeah. So you can use Nook Link now to emote. So you can emote quickly with your friends to make it a lot more comedic timing and stuff like that, which is it's, nice. Uh, I think it's funnier though, when you're like me and uh, Lindsay and she's on the NSO app and I'm trying to type in game. So she's way faster. than me. Yeah. I remember when we were all playing it a lot and like a couple people were using the app and the rest weren't, you could really tell. Cause like I was, I was one of them using the app so I could type like these long sentences super quickly and these other people would take a minute just to say like two words. Click, 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 click. Hi. Press A. Hello. Um, so yeah, and there's also they added a ring con in from Ring Fit Adventure you can have in your house yes. now, which is a that'll be going for everybody who with the update. Yeah. It is like um Well the first update had the uh the bell the bell bag the the yeah. bell bag rug and the second update had a snorkel no oh. the summer update had a snorkel i feel like i'm missing something there's it's another rug it was like a green leaf rug oh no that was rug. that not in no it sorry that was in... from um the nsl yeah. bonus uh, it, it's a free item. That's what's important. It was some, <laughs> it was some rug where it's like some leaves on it. It was like not like the bell, but it's like a natural like rug where it's like a square. Oh yeah, you know, I will say I'm kind of hoping there's more costumes than just the mage's dress because everything else they showed off at the time of the mage's dress is stuff that's already in the game. Mm-hmm. 
I'm sure there'll be more than just the techno... one thing. I mean, the video the video was only like a minute and a half. They didn't. Show, yes, that's there's true. No way they showed off everything. Yep, there's no, that's they never showed off everything. everything. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that comes out uh, the day of this podcast. So be sure to check that out. Um. And if nothing else, grow some pumpkins. Who doesn't like yes. Who doesn't like farming games? Okay. Moving on from the farming, I'm sorry. Um, more restock. Animal Crossing. We have a restock of the amiibo cards. You can use these amiibo cards to invite villagers to your town and ask them to stay. And I'm sure if you were into Animal Crossing in any capacity uh, for New Horizons and the launch and following months of that, uh, you will probably have heard of the blow up secondhand market for amiibo cards and NFC reprints on Etsy and things like that so nintendo's finally getting around to restocking them um, but it should be noted this is only series one through four if you want one of the welcome amiibo there's more than second. four series there's, there's one there's four series of 100 cards there's the welcome amiibo of 50 there's the sanrio six the three from amiibo festival isabel cp and kkcp now, uh, I never bought the Amiibo cards, but I know you bought all of them. So is yes. it, it's like it's like trading cards. You buy a pack and you don't know what you're going to get. Yes. Right. Uh, the it will take series... you about 17 packs on average to get all of the cards. Well, no, not on average. As a minimum. okay, if you want them all and you're lucky, it'll then take at a minimum, you. yes. Yeah. Um, each pack has five regular villagers and then one of the special NPCs. Uh, Isabel has, I think, one in every pet or every one in every set, except for Welcome Amiibo, which does not have that restriction, but it also only had five cards to a pack to balance out the fact that they didn't include specials. So basically, and if you want to try to get all these cards at minimum, you're gonna to have to trade at, a lot. At minimum, before tax, you will be spending just over a hundred dollars. That's best. Yes, that's is, best case. It is about a dollar per card, and it actually was that on the second hand market until, until it was New Horizons. You know, New Horizons. Yeah, like because. We were told last year around E3 that they were planning to do, like, the devs talked to, I think, a French uh, uh, game report site, whatever, and they said Amiibo were going to be used in New Horizons. I feel like I'm the only one that saw that, though, because everyone else seemed super surprised when Amiibo were and uh, fully announced to be working exactly yeah, the same not, way no as they do in New Leaf. No one attention to Amiibo like you do, man. you got to tone down your expectations. You're right, though. Uh, I, mean, I mean, like, you're not, yeah, like, you have a fair point. Like, people, sh I, I, even I knew, like, and I'm not Amiibo crazy like Cameron is. I am Amiibo crazy. But <laughs> not that on a crazy. slightly lower yeah, level. And I tried to tell my roommates, like, if you're going to get Animal Crossing, you should probably get the amiibo cards you want now. And guess who didn't listen? Um, but if and you... now they're <laughs> super expensive. If you Dude, Marshall is like a hundred dollars. I have Marshall on my island. <laughs> Sell him for a hundred dollars. No, no, no! You got to undercut the amiibo. Seventy-five dollars. Yes, Final 80 offer. 80 bucks. Um, anyway, so if if you want to be a degen and not buy these cards and you haven't done the research already for some weird reason, uh, you can buy blank NFC cards and most modern smartphones have an NFC read-write ability. So you can just download an app or go to a website or some sort and you can just write the NFC data from Amiibo online onto the cards. Uh, I am not recommending that you do this because it's probably illegal. Uh, I can't. It is. I cannot you're stealing confirm. Technology. Yeah, uh, I can't confirm because I haven't actually read where it says it's illegal. But I'm gonna put money on that it's illegal. So I'm not telling you that you should do this, but it is a thing you can do. If, it's just an option. I'm not telling you you should do it because it's illegal it, to do that, but it's an option. It's like it's like emulating a game. There is a legality when it is available. 
yeah. uh, that is that is my stance on it. If it's legally available, you're stealing. Yeah. And these cards are about to be reprinted. So do with that information what you will. Uh, yeah, but we had nothing to do on that. Okay. Yes. Ten deal. I I own all <laughs> the Nebo cards in Nintendo. Please don't sue me. I don't have any NFC chips, and I don't care enough to get the cards or get the NFC chips. So. You got the Mario cards. Yeah, but that was a bulk deal for cheaper than what they go for. Mm -hmm. If That's I could true. find that for the Animal Crossing cards and it was cheaper than what they go for, I will buy it. But there, there is an eBay you had deal. had the chance. <laughs> yeah, there was an eBay deal I saw on the um, uh, the e-reader Animal Crossing cards, but it was a thousand dollars. Oh, they're not worth that. Dude, you know how bad I want the Mario Bros. 3 e-reader cards and how expensive they are? I, I want them so bad. I have, like, two or three of them. Uh -huh. You also own um everything, so do we, for the Mario Party, which is kind of fun. Yeah, yes. yeah, Mario Party E, I think is what it's called. No yeah. one ever brings up Mario Party E. No. I mean, it's, Dude, a, it's a decent there, board game. I mean, imagine if there was a Mario Kart e reader. No, that sounds it would terrible. Be a pain in the ass. <laughs> that sounds awful. Well, before we go down the tangent of Game Boy Advance for some stupid reason, um, wrapping up the Amiibo, uh, the Animal Crossing stuff, uh, Tokyo Amiibo. Game Show awarded uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons with their Game of the Year. Which, uh, I mean, is big, and it's probably telling that at least Animal Crossing will be the con a contender for the actual game of the year, <laughs> if yeah. not if not the game of the year. Um, It'd be I really cool if Animal Crossing won it. I still can't really decide personally if Animal Crossing is actually the game of the year, or it just happened to get the best timing in the universe with with our global situation. And just seem like the game of the year because of how explicit it was due to its circumstances. I'm not knocking it. It's not like a 10 out of 10 game. It's an amazing game. But imagine how good it's going to be when they I, add content. I don't but, know if it's the it's time yeah, uh, time gating things. I think it's more just its sales come from like it still would have sold gangbusters because if you go look at any Animal Crossing game, they're always in the top 10. Ex Best City, City, City Folk, Folk is the yeah City Folk's the only one that isn't, but the Wii's a little weird with that. Yes, yeah, but I don't think. But I think it, top ten is different than top game. Top two, yeah, like, it is. It is right behind Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Like there, there's a fair chance that it actually. You, you I mean, I think they're more the than they're typically. More than the top two, I'm just, or top ten, but, bleh, um, but I can't remember exact numbers, and I don't feel it, like looking it up right now. So I'm going with. I, I'm pretty what sure I know in general, was, Wild World is definitely top five for bestsellers on DS, and I think New Leaf is like number seven, if not higher. Yeah, I don't I, know. I I think you know uh, it's. It's got a very good chance to win because not only was it a really good game, but it also exploited its timing unintentionally. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but yeah, that's that's a big uh, honor for that game. I mean, um, and the three really games that got out at the beginning of the year have all sold really well. Yeah, um, Doom Eternal, Animal Crossing: New Horizons, and Persona Five Royal. Um. Yeah, it's it's really just incredible. Um, and I was interested to see how it was going to do. I wasn't worried about like Persona 5 or Doom Eternal because those are specific audiences, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they're, Animal one... Crossing has always been treated as a niche series, even though it's consistently a top 10 seller i mean it's not niche but it's casual yeah well yeah but people treat it as a niche series even though it's not and plus the, all the controversy around the save data issues and and connectivity issues around the time but then again pokemon had a bunch of issues going into it and still sold 
poggers. So I feel like uh, Pokemon sold more because of the controversy. I don't I feel, feel like, like Animal Crossing did as much because people bought it and then realized that there were they couldn't have more than one person be uh, in control. I feel like the yeah, like... issues with Pokemon Sword and Shield will be they it was never going to affect them. It's going to affect the next Pokemon game. Like, they're going to sell less. Doubt. Doubt. I'm doubt. Pokemon will never sell bad. I, I will actually be shocked when Pokemon sells bad, because that means, like, something drastic happened. Because even, no, like, no matter how much crap happens, unless the head of Pokemon comes out and starts screaming racial slurs, even I, then, I really don't think... I mean, it's just the name. It's it's kind of embedded. Yeah, it, I don't think it will it sell bad. I just think the, the next one will if be her something level. doesn't Although, change. Yeah, I really hope. Uh, real quick, because this is coming out later this year, even though everybody's forgotten about it. New Pokemon Snap. I really hope it sells well because we haven't heard anything about that since they announced it. No, we haven't. Like. Is that still going to release this year? Well, Pokemon has done at least it once other time this year where they had like two 10-minute directs like one week apart. Like they had the first – we'll talk about – they they actually announced one. We'll talk about that later. But it wouldn't be surprising that they have this direct and it's like 10 minutes. And then like at the end of it, they'll be like, hey, we're going to have another one next week on Pokemon Snap. And then it's – no, no, no. We're going to have another one next week. For a tennis and mobile game, mobile game. <laughs> I'm not sure, uh, Alex, if it's coming out this year. Unless it's coming out on the. Day. They, they wanted they have they announced it earlier this year if they weren't planning to. Have I don't it. know. Pokemon Sleep still hasn't had anything said about it, and it's been Pokemon over a year. Sleep is made by Game Freak, not by, um, nah, Bandai, Bandai Namco. Namco. Yeah. yeah. Like, I like how we have GameStop more faith site, than Bandai Namco. Game, game, GameStop site has it set as December 31st, 2020. That's because we were never given an actual yeah. release. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Pokemon usually doesn't announce things more than a year in advance. If they announce it this year, it's planned to come out this year. And if they have a place placeholder date for this year, that means it's expected to be this year. So until they Unless explicitly it... say it's got it's been delayed for whatever reason, um, we're expecting it to come out this year. I mean, yeah, it could always be delayed, but I really doubt it. Yeah, it's, yeah, same. I mean, it's Pokemon Snap. Is it really that hard? Look yes, how beautiful it looks. Just, yeah, y'all silence. It took twenty years. Y'all silence speaks volumes. Because <laughs> it took twenty years. Yeah. Like, well, clearly, it's hard. Um, how did we end up at Pokemon Snap? Our tangents are so powerful. I don't how we we went from Tokyo Game Show Animal Crossing to pokemon snap <laughs> tell us in the comments down below <laughs> yeah or we're so good at just going on tangents well that wraps up all of our animal crossing stuff uh for this week so definitely excited for the uh fall update and we'll be checking about that and we'll report back on the pumpkin farming fill you guys in yes so let's move on um amazon shows off their new cloud-based gaming streaming service called luna um it is to rival the likes of stadia and x cloud and geforce now and insert other streaming service here um the i'm reading an article from bittech.net that's telling me all this info i'm relaying to you guys um it will be 5.99 a month for a quote luna plus membership uh so it's not bad. Yeah. Um, it uh, supports two devices at once with 1080p60 currently as the max, but they're planning on having 4K support in the future for select titles. Um, let's see. They already have deals lined up to offer games from Ubisoft, Capcom, 505 Games, Team 17, etc., um, I'm looking at a picture here. I don't know if these are the games confirmed, but I'm seeing stuff like Control, Resident Evil 7, Sonic Mania, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, The Surge 2. That's not... Why would you... Why is that a bragging game? Uh, Metro Exodus, Watch Dogs Legion, um, uh, Ukulele, The Impossible Lair. I still need to play that game. 
Um, Man, I, some of these I don't know if I would try streaming, but I'm not a fan of the streaming idea. The, problem, for the video current games. problem with streaming services for video games is just latency. Like, not everyone has good enough Wi-Fi to stream a game. I, I, I mean, would, I would disagree. Different... I think, I think the latency is actually pretty decent because they wouldn't have launched it if the latency was unplayable. And again, you're not, you're not using this service to play highly competitive games. Mm, Most people, I mean, some people are. Yeah, at least, yeah. But I the, mean, the, boss the... fights in Resident Evil kind of need you to be able to keep up. Yeah, but I mean, the it, latency isn't a huge issue I mean, because wasn't... otherwise Stadia would have already failed. Um, but well, Cameron, you are right it, about the... Didn't it do poorly, though? Like, it's selling, but it's not doing, like, what Google expected. I got, like, I don't... eight ads for Stadia earlier. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of Stadia ads recently. But they, are, it, they are pushing it hard. If the latency was a big issue, we would have heard about it in the reviews of I haven't um, heard anything about Stadia. Um yeah, the, I I agree with you on the on the Wi-Fi thing. Not a lot of people have the bandwidth for that. It eats up a ton of data, especially for people who have data caps like myself. I have a terabyte data cap um which Ooh. would it would just chew through that if I was streaming games, especially if they when they get to like 4K. I think that's that's insane. Mm -hmm. And um not only that, but like the game, the libraries just kind of suck. Like I think that's I'm... Stadia's biggest problem right now is not the latency, but bandwidth management, data management, and the libraries. Like, they're they're, I have seen nothing enticing from Stadia in terms of games that I want to play, and I think uh, most people can say that. Like, I know I'm not I've really only seen one thing that they've had as a year. They have it exclusive for a year, and the only reason I'm interested in it. Is because I really like the other game the company made. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. What game is it? Degrees of Separation is what they made, and it was a really fun multiplayer game. Yeah, and they... Alex and I played that on the channel, and we we thoroughly enjoyed it. And, but Sadia took their not sequel, their next project as an exclusive. Yeah. Um, so I'm just waiting. Because when Until I when I think of release. the the streaming services, XCloud is immediately more enticing to me because now I have the promise of an Xbox gaming library, which isn't the best thing out there. But you know they did just buy Bethesda, though. They just bought mm -hmm. Bethesda. They've got a ton of the multi-platform games this generation, which are super cool. Um, and you know Xbox exclusives are kind of eh, but. They're cool but games. All those it's, other games. It's, I don't know. it's better than coming out with a streaming service and say, hey, we have PUBG Jeez. and the Surge 2 to play. Hey, guys, we, 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 don't worry, guys. We got games yeah, coming. We have they're they're, they're coming game. to the service. <laughs> so, Slowly. And it, the, actually, that's a... I, I just saw this. The way that um, games have been coming to these services, at least the way I've heard it, is kind of, or, you know, the way they presented it at launch, is kind of the way Nintendo is doing Nintendo Switch Online. It's just like a drip feed of games you actually want to play. Mixed yeah, in but with that's not going to work. For exactly, that's the problem. It, it possibly would work for xCloud because the reason it works for Nintendo is because they've got the name. And the reason it might work for xCloud is because they've got the name. They've got Xbox. But like Stadia Can't and do that Luna. Like, Stadia and Luna. Yeah, you've got no backup. You've got no proof that your your stuff is good, right? So, yeah. Yeah, on um, one hand, you have tech giant Google. There's no games there. On the other hand, you have the octopus putting its uh, tentacles and everything that is amazon neither yeah. of them have a gaming background i mean these services just they're just bland you know like they work and they're cool and x x cloud has merit to me because like oh I've, i can play xbox games on my phone that's way better than saying i can play I can play what well, I can stream PUBG to my phone. There's a PUBG app. Why would I not just play it on the phone? A better yeah, only is PC yeah, exactly. version. PUBG, PUBG Mobile is better than the PC version. 
So, yeah. Anyway, but they're. But there are you go ahead. I hate that gaming's moving towards streaming. I yeah. Just be. It's partly because I just really love owning the games myself, and with streaming, digitally, I already feel like I don't own the games, and streaming, I definitely do not own the games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I wouldn't say it's moving towards streaming. It's going to be a long Not time yet. before... It's, it's You're right, made. but they're trying to push... Some of the companies, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, are all trying to push it that way, and I don't... So they, it, they can start giving an actual reason to push towards... Yeah, you set it up now, and everyone calls you an idiot, but 10, 15 years down the road, you have an infrastructure already in place when the com competition comes along and goes these are the competition well yeah but i mean sony sooner or later might i doubt it it, sony's a big sony's big with japanese and japanese like to own consoles well so you if you're thinking future like now it's it's super shaky but like in the future when data caps aren't a thing hopefully please they'll still be a thing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, that'll still be a thing but you know hopefully well, more than a terabyte data caps used to be a thing on mobile and now it's not i still have a data cap no you don't i well i mean i don't oh well uh, we do but it's not like a realistic thing because well, we're not idiots streaming 4k netflix to our phones um unlimited data plans are steadily becoming the the, the standard so once that happens with internet, and then once we have the inner infrastructure in place, hopefully before we destroy our own planet, that we can have mm-hmm. internet anywhere in the world with stuff like Starlink from Tesla and whatnot, um, it wouldn't be unreasonable. But yeah, I agree. I would rather have the physical stuff because it, it's, no matter if you have internet or not, you can play games. Um but Unless yeah. you're on Origin, in which case it goes, ha! Ah. Hmm. No. Uh, but also, the streaming war that's about to start up is why Microsoft bought out Bethesda, and why I'm scared that, like, Sega or Capcom or um, Bandai Namco or Square Enix or any third party like that that works with like all the companies is going to get bought out next. Yeah, because Bethesda was. And I really hate that idea. Well, you know, if I'm going to be honest, I don't mind digital games. Like, it it depends on what the console is. Like, Nintendo stuff, all of us are pretty much on the same page of like physical as much as possible because for whatever reason there's no real reason we i mean just, we just like i'll it. be honest i own a huge digital collection but i still prefer physical yeah it's it's you physical when you can digital otherwise or if it if it benefits you in some way but like my xbox collection is i don't i barely own any physical games uh, the ones I do, I mostly own because GameStop has cheap sales on them, which is another reason physical things need to stay around because used games are a huge market, and I love being able to buy AAA games two years after release for like $5. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you really hate the game, you can sell it. That's where you're stuck with it forever yeah, with digital. But I barely own any physical games for my Xbox. I have Game Pass. I have a ton of downloaded games on my Xbox, and I don't really care. I think it's 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 easy to just open the console or turn on the console, pick a game, instantly go, and not have to worry about the disc or anything. Um, now, it's a different story when it comes to Nintendo because I care a lot more about the hardware and the company than I do about Xbox. But, you know, I mean, there's a big market for it. You know, it's not the entire market, but there's a lot of people that do just kind of want no hassle, no disc stuff you know that's Which the is reason exactly we have... why sony is doing the ps5 all digital hold yeah. on and be microsoft honest microsoft did, has uh, one as well microsoft did the xbox sad yes well the xbox series s is not comparable to the playstation 5 digital because the playstation 5 digital is the same thing as the ps5 with a disc well yes but the but series my, s is I, not a series x with minus a disc well now isn't the series s still got a disc drive 
the Series S does not have a disk drive. It is. Oh, uh, I was I was referring to the Xbox One S, all digital. Yeah. Microsoft, please. Yeah. Well, that was the, they. So they did it first. They're just testing the waters. But now their Series S does not have a disk drive, and it is still pretty much last, almost last gen power. Yeah, it's, it's between the One S and the One X in power. Does not have a disk drive, and it's cheaper than the PS5 digital edition. For that it reason, is the it's same not the price same, as yeah. the Switch, is it not? Yeah, it's three hundred. Uh, yeah, that's. But it won't have that level of games. Yeah. Well, it. But you know, I can think of several people I know personally that would be very enticed by a Series S because I mean they play a couple games on what Xbox and they play it all digital um, because they want to play things. You know, twelve a.m. midnight day of release, you buy it digitally. That's what they like to do. Just instant have it ready. You can pre-download it. All that mess. You know, that's enticing to a lot of people. I, I mean, that's, that's what the digital me. consoles are digital more digital. for: are people who aren't gonna be like, "Oh yeah, I collect games and want to own them forever." Yeah, I think it's kind of hard for people like us to see that because we surround ourselves with similar games. people who collect who hoard games. Really, we have a Horde. like we surround ourselves with other people's with this obsession. So it seems like the video game addiction. Of, it's I deserve <laughs> the stamp. It it makes us feel like most people are like that, but actually a large majority it's, of the market does yeah, not. Yeah, we are games. in the minority. <laughs> Dude, I have twelve just, games on my desk, not including the ones in my Switch. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got like six. I can, I think, I can count without there, taking too much time. There's a reason I'm stuck having no room. It's because I have all these games. On. Oh, I completely forgot. I've actually got my 3DS games on here. So, what is that? 4, 8, 12. Six. I have almost 30 games on my desk. <laughs> I mean, realistically, the reason I buy digital is because the physical. It's very rare, but sometimes the physical is way more expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um,. That's what I said, like, the physical market needs to stay around because having cheap used games is really nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I got Hey Pikmin, because it's not available anywhere. I, but, I, you know, I look on eBay, and, oh, look, 17 bucks. All yeah, the inserts, top. everything. Nice. Um, okay, well, back from that tangent again, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the Luna... Uh, the Luna service will be compatible with uh, Xbox One controllers, PS4 controllers, keyboard and mouse combo. Uh, there's a there's their own controller, generic, you know, standard Xbox style layout controller that they're offering. It's got that microphone. So button. if you want to be the guinea pigs, it will come out <laughs> soon. Yeah. So. Um, Actually, did they say it's coming out soon? Isn't it? I have no idea. Was... I thought he got pushed back to 2021. Let's see. Uh, that's very possible. Um, I was just making a joke. But... Got a menu button, a tiny screenshot button, I think, and a microphone button. And then, you know, generic B pad, cool. all those. So, yeah, if uh, you're one of those freaks that likes um, gaming streaming services, you know, be sure to stay up to date with that. Um... We'll see if they can at least do better than Stadia, right? That's the goal. Well, it is Amazon. All Amazon has to do is go, hey, guys, look we at this We partnered thing. it up with Prime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because let's see. What, what isn't with Prime? The they groceries? Have... Amazon's willing to do um, Amazon does groceries. Think about that for a moment. Oh, Speaking my. of which, <laughs> we recently got... We're not listing where we are, but we recently got uh, screwed over by Amazon in our city because we're no longer getting two-day delivery shipping, off yeah. Prime, yeah, for some yeah. reason. That's weird. Yeah, isn't it? It's great. I, I love that we pay so much a year to not get two-day shipping. <laughs> it's, not even, it's not even like within a week. It's like a week and a half minimum. Yeah. So... Well, like, uh, Cooper, what? Oh, sorry. I feel like Amazon's willing to take a loss because, like, look at the, all their, uh, what do you call them? Uh, 
Echoes, they have those cheap all the time. They can't well, keep taking no, a lot. They get, <laughs> they get Amazon gets rid of their old stuff super cheap, but there was a day their uh, I think it was when the Echo Three was coming out. It, whatever, um, they had it accidentally for free. <laughs> not, they not only canceled all the orders, they deleted them, so you couldn't argue for them with customer service like nice. they may they may take losses on other people's stuff but they ooh, they they do not like don't take take a loss losses on, their on other people's stuff the second hand market costs twice as much on amazon as it does on ebay no but like other come like if if um uh, like a game gets lost, they'll just send you another one. I was just which is why people. Joke, but yeah, you're right. I mean, you are right. It's not a joke when it's true. Anyways, uh, yeah. So like, let's uh, let's let's. We are we are way behind schedule. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next, so Microsoft. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard Microsoft acquired Bethesda, which we actually parent mentioned. company. Yeah, which we just mentioned actually a few minutes ago. Um, so, so that's true. obviously obviously a big um, purchase on Microsoft's yep. part. Um, that is a huge score because everybody loves Bethesda. W. <laughs> um, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I think the big question on everyone's mind is, is Bethesda going to become an Xbox exclusive? Yes, obviously. They wanted to After... spend $7.5 billion. <laughs> Well, to, for them not to become exclusive. I mean, I wouldn't. I would um, say no, because, at least for Switch, because Microsoft plays really well with the Switch. Mm-hmm. Didn't and, Xbox like team up with Switch? And you got to think, like, yeah, Skyrim? yeah, um, you got support. Yeah, and um, Ori and the Will of the Wisps came to Switch, which was like one of biggest, be Microsoft's more... biggest games. I think I'd be more willing to believe it though if it weren't just games that they were the producer on and they actually owned. Like the Switch doesn't have Rare Replay, it doesn't have Sunset Overdrive, it doesn't have Halo well, or any of that. Actually, I guess the Switch could handle Sunset Overdrive because that that's on PC now. Ooh. It just has games they produced, which is different. Yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. Well, also, but there's not they a lot are... Of maybe Rare <laughs> Replay, but for stuff like Sunset Overdrive, uh, there's just not a lot of market. For yeah, that, it's... I don't think. Sunset Overdrive... Though, Sunset Overdrive... Spider-Man. ...is all over the place now, since Insomniac is now owned by Sony, but that was, like, the one game they've made outside of Sony, so... I understood the purchase more than yeah. I understand Bethesda getting bought out, at least. Yeah, but you know, like I would say, like plus, like Nintendo Switch and Xbox don't really compete, mm-hmm. so I would be, I would be, not, I would not be surprised if they just took Bethesda games off PlayStation platforms, but still gave some to Switch. Like Switch yeah. is supposedly still supposed to be getting Doom Eternal at some point. Um, I mean, it's, it's like Alex said, this is for, this is in preparation for the streaming wars for consoles. Yeah, this is definitely like a smart move on their general, I guess. They're, they're going to reap the reward off this one or another. And plus, you know, if Bethesda does good, then Microsoft does good. Mm-hmm. And that's what Microsoft cares about. That's yeah. why we didn't get another Banjo game. And if Microsoft stays this way of not really caring about exclusives that much then and everyone benefits then yeah so they'll they can just now reap the rewards of bethesda there's several know. ways they can go it just depends we'll have to wait and see i guess if a company does bad though microsoft kind of just shoots them in the cornfield and then forgets that they own that property entirely yeah go, Shh. uh yeah, it'll be kind of like rare. Like, oh, Bethesda, welcome to the team. You're going to get to work on Sea of Thieves now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the one thing you're allowed to do the entirety of your existence. 
Jeez. We own you, and you own a lot of great properties. But... Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Kim, are you speaking? My headphones just cut out. Oh. We can hear you just fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, but, like, it... I saw Grant lighting up, and it was still... Like, and I could hear him through Cooper's headphones, kind of, but I was just, just like, where'd my sound go? I wasn't even warned my headphones are dying, which they're not, because they're plugged in. That's weird. Yes. weird. But we've got to move on. Yeah, so that, uh, that's definitely interesting, though. We'll be... Time to get back to playing my Nintendo <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Time to get back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf. Okay. But yeah, that'll be interesting <laughs> to see what they, what they do with Bethesda if they make them an exclusive or not um so my bet they will okay well we'll see how if alex is true or not and if he's wrong then we get to bully him on the episode where this is relevant again let's um, go on to collector's corner we're back to the Fair. regular stuff we're gonna just go around and talk about uh what we've been playing this week any game finds and the like so um why don't we start with Alex? Oh, well, I beat Arena, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax and all the story stuff, and then I moved on to the final sequel part that's like not a dream of uh, Force canon, Persona 4 dancing all night. You're really just going to not stop until you've beaten every Persona game. <laughs> no, because then I had to play the first one two and two sequel which are very different hmm. yeah they're old school rpgs which kind of scare me oh yeah but their further score stories are really good but no after this one i'm taking a break from persona and playing uh either animal crossing or a mario game nice mm -hmm. well uh cooper what are you playing um i've been enjoying among us with a lot of my homies <laughs> I mean, can't blame me for it. That's a hot. That's a hot thing. That's true. All listeners, if you have not played Among Us, you should definitely do it's it. It's five dollars. Buy, yeah, buy the PC it's free version. on phone. Please don't play on phone. You will die. You'll get ads, but it's free. Yeah. yeah, but you're also going to be worthless to imposters because you can't properly kill people mm -hmm. as an imposter on mobile because. You have no space to work, so it's just, it's not good. Like, Don't do it. Doing, if you're gonna do mobile, it's like if that. it can run on a phone, it can run on your potato computer. Yeah, and it's five dollars. We assure you, it can. Yeah, my computer. <laughs> if Cooper's computer can run it. Yours can. Just you know, no, as a computer older than ten years, then uh, <laughs> uh, you need to join Cooper in getting a new computer. <laughs> big frame <laughs> but yeah definitely check that out um cameron uh so i have been doing daily animal crossing uh i actually just got a couple of days ago i got the uh acorn slash pine cone recipes which um nintendo needs to really really fix these stupid recipe spawns that never like... they broke the spider and scorpion <laughs> And you want them to make it better? I want them to fix the spider and scorpion too. It took me forever to find a scorpion. Um, but Maybe I guess... it's your island. Have you seen all your shit? <laughs> yeah, I've got like a gazillion recipes. Hit me up if you want to come get some recipes. Just I got a sell lot. them. Uh, Cameron, sell no. them. <laughs> no, you guys are eventually going to come back to Animal Crossing. And then I've got a gazillion recipes for you when you come back. <laughs> Dude, Karen, <laughs> Karen, you sound like an insane boyfriend that got broken up with. <laughs> I have all these gifts for my next girl. <laughs> ah! Yeah, it's like bringing your ex over after a couple months be like, look at all these things I got you. It just like, that's bad vibes. Bad vibes, man. You gotta chill. Just sell it. No. It, no. It's time to move on. Some of Cameron. those recipes are from the summer event. It, she's gone, Cameron. She's gone. You're all right here. You could play right now. No, we're podcasting. You could play uh, after the podcast. You're just cowards. Um, but I've also been playing... Uh, well, I just beat Sunshine 100%. Uh, 
on um, 3D All Stars. I've started working on 64, and um, it's bad. Yeah, 64, isn't it? 64 is 64. bad. Oh, <laughs> 64 is not bad. As but... as a Discord comment said, 64 has aged like a dead body. Like it's yeah. dude, no, especially if you controversial shit, you're gonna get us in trouble. You <laughs> guys are coming. You're listeners. gonna get us in trouble. Yeah, Alex, come. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bleep you out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, six sixty four. Especially if you play like that's the problem with playing sixty four next to Sunshine or yeah, Galaxy. You should have played it first. I tried. I don't think it, it would have been bad. better. It, yeah, I Grant was streaming it, and he switched over to Sunshine within. I, I got uh, the, the first I half got, hour. So. Yeah, I got like ten stars in, and then I hit some stuff that was just trash. And I was like, "This is like, look, Here's... I'm not, I'm not dissing its legacy. It was monumental at the time, and I respect that, and I'm totally all for it. Look, I'm a Nintendo guy, just as just as much as anyone else here, and I totally get how big Mario 64 is. But holy crap, is it trash now? Six, 64 does not hold up to the other Mario. It doesn't hold up to Sunshine, which people will claim is the worst Mario. 64 is the worst 3D Mario. Yeah, and you can't... Look, I'm not, not, like, faulting it for being old. That's just how it is. But, like... It's it's just... just, It did not age well at all. Kind has not been time. (laughs) Kind has not been time. Kind has not been time. Time has not been kind to the camera... Or Are you trying to controls? control the camera yourself? Yes. That's I can wrong. Do that. You're playing the game wrong. Literally should... every streamer, every like person who just plays it endlessly to get world records lets the camera do what it wants for the most part. Mm-hmm. See, but I, I can do that, that with worse. every. Yeah, that's the problem. I... I'm supposed to play it. Like it's still on the N64, and I've never played an- another game. 64 is aged poorly. 64 had a camera control. How dare you? Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask I have aged 64 has you aged poorly. 64. So I took it as the console. No, as in Mario 64. I... Mario 64 has aged poorly. That's the whole tangent we're on right now, is that it's aged super poorly. Yeah, like, let's, okay, it... look, um, most N64 games have aged poorly, but I don't want to open Ocarina... up that can of worms because we don't have the time Ocarina of Time and uh, Majora's Mask have not. Although, but... if they're going to port it, they if, might as well port if... the better versions. I would at least give them some credit with 64 if it was full screen. It's really... Isn't it? But just not in handheld? No, no, no. it is not. It is not 16 it, by 9. It's really obnoxious. Yeah. It, there's the black bars on the top and bottom of my screen along with the uh, giant black sidebars as if it, I'm playing it in vertical mode. Yeah, like you it's... can tell it's bare bones put together. I really, I really wish they added something it, to the like Mars. It, uh, it, this I... is why it's going away in March, dear viewers. <laughs> I I think like they Mars. should have ported Mario sixty four DS yes. with proper control. But then people would bitch because it's not sixty four. Alex, this is a family friendly channel. I'm gonna punch you through God the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Please do so. Then I don't sure. have to take my uh, test. Okay. You still have to take it. Damn. You're just gonna be in pain. No. More so than you already are inside. I am We're having to take a test. Um. Okay. Well, I. What have I been playing? Um. Yeah. I've been. Pl- I've been switching between Sunshine and Galaxy. Um. Galaxy is so good. I haven't played that game. Dude, it's been I like love four Galaxy. Or five so, years you, since I you know what? Um, you know what the thing about Galaxy is, right? It's yeah. kind of a port and kind of their emulation, like they did with sixty four in Sunshine, like yeah. Yeah, because we of that last week. Yes, like it, dude. Yeah. That that's why it's the best one in the collection. I haven't played it because I went. If I play Galaxy, you won't want to go. I'm back. not going. Yeah. I'm not going to want to play sixty four. I don't. I mean, Galaxy was always going to be doing. the best in the collection, though. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
handheld mode is a bit annoying on my regular switch on my switch Lite, it's not bad because i can easily reach the screen but on my big switch it's a bit annoying to have to touch but the controls are implemented well and it just feels so good it's the most satisfying it's so much fun and it's so unique and creative i just man i for I, it's crazy I, I played that game like five years ago and now i just i guess completely forgot I mean, like, I already knew it was amazing, but, like, holy crap, man, that game is The Shame so Galaxy good. 2 isn't also there, though. I... Very much facts. Yes, Ga Galaxy 2 being there would be nice. I haven't you know, she's played gotta be breaking it or something Galaxy now. since the... I know... Yeah, I haven't done anything with Galaxy since yeah, I... Cameron and I 100 percented it on the Wii, and I don't think I've touched it since then. I, I don't think I've touched it since then. So, whereas uh, with... Sunshine, I replayed it maybe four or five years ago. we lost ago. our memory card data. That's true. Um, I played that four or five years ago, so I kind of knew where things were. Going into Galaxy is almost going to be a fresh experience. It's going to be super awesome. Yeah, it's going to be really good for sure. But that's pretty much all I've been playing. I can't... Um, oh yeah, I got. I went to games last week after we talked about the the Resident Evil games for Next Generation. I went to GameStop like the next day, and they I did a four for thirty deal on pre owned games, fifteen bucks or left, and I got Resident Evil Seven and started playing that, and I really it the, like it. I'm stuck. Was it just Resident Evil Seven, or was it the Gold Edition that had all the DLC? Just the regular, I think. Um, they didn't have the Gold Edition; they're pre owned anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm stuck at the part where like it's like the family thing. I'm still pretty early in the game, but man, it's I was I had like the when lights you're... cut off and like it was raining outside. I had the perfect ambiance for some spooky game. So like uh, when you first uh, are at the dinner table. Yeah, yeah. When you're like, at the dinner table, and then like all that stuff happens, and then the, the there's an father's chasing you. Oh yeah, when he's chasing you, you can lose your foot. Oh well, yeah, like. I, I don't know where to go. Like, I just keep the... I get the crap beaten out of me, but I don't die. Mm. So, it might have been... It might have, might have been a glitch. I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I've only tried it once. I haven't tried really, really hard, so... But, yeah. There's a specific room you want to run into and then jump into uh, the crawl space. Okay. Well, I'll do that next time I boot up the game. But, yeah, I've been playing that. So, that's uh, Collector's Corner this week. Oh, wait. What? I wanted to say one more thing about this. Uh, I've been playing Fae recently, and I was able to pull the duo Sigurd. And also, this upcoming Mythic banner is going to be uh, Plumria. I think that's how you say it. Fire Emblem Heroes? Mm hmm. Okay. Garbage. <laughs> Lude Fairy. <laughs> Lude Dream. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Well, all right then. That wraps up Collector's Corner this week. Um, we'll move into some tidbits. Uh, just a bunch of little super tiny things. Um, Nintendo announced uh, a new Mario action figure doll, the It's a Me Mario doll, with quote, um, over 30, 30 phrases, phrases and sound effects. This is like a... This is so generic. But it's a Me Tickle Mario me action. Elmo, boys. Tickle no, me it's Mario. me Mario. It's the me Mario. They it's don't even have Mario. the sound clip on the tweet. Well, as long as it doesn't have creepy phrases like versions of typical me Elmo had. That it's a me Elmo. It's a me <laughs> Mario. Yeah, so definitely you want a to kid's die? Thing if um, <laughs> really nothing to it. It's just some kind of cheap slightly maneuverable well, action figure. actually i don't know how much it is it might not be cheap well it looks um, cheaply made i mean they it sold was... a well, mario stand holder for like 50 bucks that was for the 3ds all it did was hold the 3ds but it cost like 50 dollars well they did that with link too yeah that's true and i wanted that one um they, but, but they've, they've done that a lot this year like because and, and we talked about that the, yeah, like the Everybody Levi wanted earlier this year and yeah. everything. Else. Like they're yeah. they're going all out. It's gotta be the new president. Mm -hmm. They're going all out except for your Mario sixty four, which they went 
This good is good enough. enough. Yeah. To so be yeah, fair, that's... if I was only gonna have the game out for six months, I also would it, just it go wasn't good supposed enough. to be six months because there was code found on the website that said the Mario, uh, the Mario Maker courses were supposed to come out in April, so it was probably supposed to be a year. Unless it was gonna always release on Mario's birthday, and then it would be six months. Okay, let's uh, just. Who knows? Nice. It's stupid. Story, yeah. <laughs> it, limiting uh, it is stupid. Yeah. Um, Kirby Fighters Two, which I think we mentioned last week, is like being accidentally revealed. That was real, yep. so that's out now. And there's code found in it for a 3D oh. Kirby game. I don't so know. We might have a new Kirby that game was... to look forward to. Besides that one, wasn't that anna- like announced the next day? Was it? Yeah. Did we even... Either like one day or two days. Yeah, it was like right after. Got yeah, I don't there. even know if we had time to talk about that on the podcast, but it's um. So yeah, it's the just the Kirby fighting game. Kirby yes. Fighters makes sense in the title. Um, so I mean, it's cool, but like honestly, Smash, just play Smash. Smash is a Kirby game. <laughs> a um, curse. That's too <laughs> cursed. That's the most cursed <laughs> statement I've ever heard in my life. I mean, Sakurai is. Kirby's creator. I know. Even you're, if he look, hasn't... you're right, and I hate it. <laughs> even if he hasn't touched the series in like 20 years. Although, in both Bra and Ultimate Storyline, he's like, Kirby will be the hero. <laughs> so. So, if you really like Kirby, I mean, you can check it out. It's only available on the eShop, 20 bucks. <laughs> Um, we got some better look at the some better looks at the Monster Hunter Rise amiibo. We still don't know about that rumor on the collector's edition if the Magnamolo is a variant, but um, we it, finally got some but, better looks at them. And these amiibo are big, man. These are some big yeah. honking amiibo. If you if you've seen the Guardian amiibo, that looks roughly the size of how do you yeah, pronounce it? I think the Guardian if you were to like straighten out its things would be still be technically bigger but this one's a giant amiibo All but not them, really. as big as Detective Pikachu or well, Mega Yarn Detective Pikachu those are tall those aren't particularly wide big. I don't know that this this is Yarn Yarn Yoshi wide kind of, of kind of long it, really not it's really. a bit it's about two amiibo wide, but it's but that's more because it balances out the height. Detective Pikachu, it is so. What's weird is that Detective Pikachu has an actually larger base. Like it's kind of impressive they designed a base He's super that heavy large. Too. Yeah, Detective Pikachu could be used as a blunt force object, um, <laughs> but. This base for uh, Mag... What is this? Magnamola. How do you, how do you not even know yeah. the amiibo name and you're more like concerned about them than I are? What the... Because I don't know how to pronounce them. That's Magnamolo, the Palico, and Palamute. Ooh. He's <laughs> going to own them all anyways. He doesn't care about names. That's you true. Know, actually, I, 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 um... I, I, learned, I finally made the connection with this. Palico and Palamute are are puns on animals because Palico is a calico cat, but he's your pal. So Palico. Oh That's big brain. <laughs> yeah. And Palamute is the same way. I don't I can't remember the breed of it, but like it's it's a it's a blank breed, but it's also your pal. So that's why that's where those names come from. Interesting. Uh, that's big brain. But I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah. Um so yeah, those are some big amiibo. I guess it makes sense to the price a little more. I'm very excited yeah. to get those in my hands. Yes. Uh, speak a quick thing on amiibo. Speaking of uh, Joker and Hero, out the end of this week. Well, um, last year, which was last week. Europe, yeah. and, Europe and Japan, and basically everyone else got them on uh, the 25th. Europe beat US. us for once. So U.S. gets them on the second. So for but... us, us Patriot folks, get them on the end of this week around here. Um, I mean, yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, just quick. I mean, with thing here. Um, Farmville yes. is dead. Crab rave. Per- 
<laughs> Are you sure in, crab rave and not in, sadness? In the sh- in the show on a crab rave. Um, sad crab rave. <laughs> sad crab rave. Minor minor chord crab rave. Um, yeah. So Farmville <laughs> was announced to be um, removed from the Facebook page either already or is about to be like in a couple days um Mm -hmm. it's very sad i played farmville so much as a middle schooler and junior high kid and uh the real reason it's sad it's not really because we played it anytime recently it's just it's just because it it lasted so long and then they went oh like i i mentioned this in the chat earlier when we first found out about this but this game was shown to me right off the heels of my like year long Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town binge on the Game Boy Advance. So I remember you playing that in middle school. Yeah, Korg and I would play on the bus like every day in middle school for like a year straight. Wow. Um, but yeah, so I was right off the heels of that. So I was just like injecting farming games into my veins, and it pretty much solidified my love of farming sim games which is like super weird thing to love but i it's just it's like half the reason why i love them so much so that's very is it they sell incredibly well yeah i just love Mm. i mean farming simulator like hook me up give me a drip of farming simulator like that's just my stuff so yeah i'm very sad to see that go i played that a ton growing up moment of silence um but yeah, that's really all we have to say. I mean, rip. Yeah, for real. Uh, F. F. Yeah, F in the comments, please. Um, I just think it's funny that it was a game banned by like a ton of schools because it was that addictive for people. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's because those games require a time commitment, mm. and the schools went no. Also, it was like one of those first games where it's like. Oh, you can steal your parents' credit card and buy five hundred dollars worth of farm bucks or whatever. That and uh, the memes about people being like, "Quit asking me to help you with your town. If you keep asking, I'm gonna get on and destroy your <laughs> farm." Yeah, I remember like having to ask my neighbors all the time, like, "Hey, can you come over and like play with my chickens so I can get a better egg and probably get some more gas so I can use my tractor, please?" I became it's like kinda... I became really like like weirdly good friends with Corgan's grandmother because she played the game so much and she was like level 200 or something. Oh I aspired to be her. I was like please help me. So she was like at any time I asked for something she was just instant on. That's all she did. Was farm so she was a legend. See RuneScape gave me my love of MO MRPGs. Farmville kind of destroyed it because I can't stand the idea of just waiting for people to come help me. <laughs> I just want to play the game. Yeah. Well, so yeah, Rip Farmville. Um, nice knowing you, man. Um, po- crab Brave. Yeah, Crab Brave. <laughs> um, all right, last of the tidbits. Pokemon uh, Crown Tundra news will be out the day after we record this. And the day before this podcast goes up. So I really hate that we can't talk to you about what they talked about because we can't read in the future. This seems to be a common theme. Um, we can't, yeah, we don't know the future, so we can't tell you about it. But if you're and we're not doing podcast, two podcasts a week, so because yeah. we don't have time. Um, yeah. So if you're listening to this podcast and did not know that that was a thing, it will most likely be up on YouTube for you to go watch. So please go do that. And if it's not, I'm sure several popular Poketubers will have a full uh, breakdown of it. Yeah. Every second. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, that's the tidbits. Um, We got a couple last thing, a couple final things here to round out the show. Um, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memories, that rhythm game with Kingdom Hearts canon lore in it, is getting a demo next month. October. Uh, yes. Uh, PS4? PS4, and Xbox, Switch, one. and Xbox. Okay. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yes. It's, it is the 
first Kingdom Hearts game to come to a Nintendo system in almost a decade. Because the last one was for the 10th anniversary with... 15th? No. 15th? No, 10th. 10th, yeah. Yeah, 10th. Yeah, because I own the collector's box. Um, Yeah. Uh, Yeah, that's cool. With Minecraft Distance. Is it a specific Uh, day? Or do we just know uh, it's We don't know the day day as far as far as i'm aware we have not been told today it would not surprise me if it was accidentally gonna be mid yeah they they knowing how square works they don't want the story leaking early because then people don't have reason to buy the game Mm -hmm. but honestly i'm I'm interested to see if the eight player uh actually I guess I can't test that, but there there's up to eight players uh for the Switch version to do versus. Oh wait, what? Yes. Eight player rhythm battle. Let's go. I will destroy everybody, but I am looking for yeah, that's cool. Too bad that I play Ruby games in my free time. <laughs> so wait, you link... play Hatsune Miku. That counts. That counts. <laughs> yeah, but who's played a more recent rhythm game? That's what? right, me. A persona dancing, exactly. Got him. <laughs> wait, so does it include spoilers? Do we know? Or yes, they're gonna yeah. include a cutscene viewer with all with like tons of cutscenes from throughout the series. Because they're going to be flying over them, so it would only make sense. I can't wait to fly <laughs> over all those deaths. Yeah. Hey, look, that's where... <laughs> so, I've um, never... I've, confession time, I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game. I'm not... Oh. No, well, compared to other RPG series, you would probably enjoy it, I Well, think. I'm going to at least check out this demo, because I love me some rhythm games. Yes. So, yeah. That'll the, be cool. I'm excited to see when when it actually comes out. It's, if literally nothing else, Square has some amazing music, even if they can't use it for literally anything. Grip Cloud nice, and Hero. <laughs> it's because they don't own it. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. They don't own it, which means you're going to get copyright striked if you try to use it. So... I don't think that's true. You just have to be it a is. big enough I... YouTube channel, which you're not. Oh. No, that's just Dude, to that's argue a... with Ouch. them. Yeah. You still legally one. can't use it. You can just argue with them into convincing them that you're going to give them some money. I guess. Or steal it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Um, so we've got a couple final things some upcoming dates that are important that we haven't already discussed first some of the last stuff about mario 35 minus the game and watch and the second pin wave um comes out the day of this podcast episode which is super mario 35 the battle royale of super mario brothers um that has tetris 99 style combat where enemies you kill and your version will be sent to other Whoever players. Whoever you're pointed at. Yeah, just like it's, Tetris 99. Um, just a shame that it's limited, but I... Yeah, it's still I'm going to play as much of that as I can. Get ready for three years of Mario 35. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much based off of the online uh, thing that that guy made, where it was just 100 mario battle royale you race against 99 other marios on the same level see the, 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 i've seen people can like compare it to that but this is you on your own but you also fight the enemies that people drop on your screen but this is a unique idea well even if it I'm, is um, it, it's nintendo it's, i'm glad um, nintendo at least put this out after taking that down yes they didn't just take it, it down and then not do anything well, um, wasn't it? This, it's actually kind of. Well, I don't know. How I mean, if it gets too big, they have to remove it because if they leave it, it it messes with gives it. precedence for companies to use their characters without their permissions. 
Yeah. yeah so if you true. want to make a fan game, don't do interviews. Mm-hmm. Keep it small, or have it blow up so big that you could just change the model as soon as it hits really big, and then Nintendo can't sue you. But you can charge for it after that. Everyone's like, I want to do a million interviews before my game came out. Oh, uh, what do you mean Nintendo's copyright striking me? What do you mean Nintendo saw it? They're not on the internet. <laughs> So yeah, that comes oh. out the day of this podcast episode. Certainly will be fun. We'll all be checking out that, and we'll report next week. Um, yes. final... I'm actually interested to see if that's going to... Wait, no. You, yeah, you said the day of this podcast. Which, it might, actually, since that would be the first in uh, Europe and Japan and such. It, it could come out probably, what, 11 p.m. Central Time? Like all the other games do? Maybe. It, it depends on how they feel. Yeah, it could actually come out on the first, as it's expected oh, to. Well, but the I day after it. this podcast, yeah, sorry, I had my days mixed up. Um, But, yeah, I mean, it could come out 11 p.m. Central Time. Possible. It depends what Japan listed it as. I have no clue. Um, I don't think they've listed it yet, have they? Cause... So for sure, the day after this podcast episode yes. comes out, it, it'll October it'll be 1st. available for <laughs> everyone 1st. that sleeps normally. <laughs> <laughs> um, and from the day this podcast goes up, there will be thirty days until Pikmin Three Deluxe launches on Switch, coming out at the end of October, October thirtieth. Yeah. Um. Another Wii U port coming into the Switch library, it's, which is, so, if, if you haven't played Pikmin 3 and you have a Switch, you should definitely get it. It's an amazing game. I really like it. I um, got a Wii U again uh, a little under a year ago, and that was one of the first things I played when I got it again and I was reminded how much I really enjoyed Pikmin 3. Pikmin 3 is a very good Pikmin game and you should definitely check it out if you haven't played it yet. And mm. even if you have played it yet, you should probably play it again because then you can actually play Pikmin 3 on the toilet without having to worry about connection issues. <laughs> but also yeah. the new Olimar and Louie story. Bring that up. Yeah, there is some new content as well. So, Yes, I... It and Mario... Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury... Is better than <laughs> Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze New Funky Edition. Where funky they only mode. Added. Pikmin 3 <laughs> Funky Mode. Dude, Just Funky Pikmin. Kong and Pikmin 3? Pikmin, <laughs> Pikmin 3 Funky <laughs> Featuring Mode. Featuring Dante, Dante from... from Devil May Cry. <laughs> no, my joke. Yeah, no. <laughs> Dante's actually getting re added to his game as $10 DLC. That's not his game. I don't no, want it but unless... it's the game where the meme originated from. I don't play any game that doesn't have Funky Kong in it. <laughs> so you Grant... play like a dozen no, no. games? Grant, Grant you can play Sluggers. Holding his controller, looking at a blank screen, waiting for Funky Kong to be announced. <laughs> you can play Sluggers. You can play one version of Mario Kart. Hey, Mario Kart Wii... Has a lot of good tracks. It really does. They really should port those to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. How about we and just you get can a play new Tropical Mario Free? Like, that's a sad thing. And I can I really... play. I can play DKC. Funky Kong is in DKC. True. Really... You can play that trilogy. Yeah. A bit off topic, but I really do hope they like port stuff to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. They will not. If they, they were going, not, to, they and they're not Mario releasing Kart. a sequel, so they're not going to make Mario Kart Nine. Look, Mario... if you want new Mario Kart, will, you have but... to play with the AR Mario Karts. Yeah, that's which are a hundred dollars and still haven't gone up for pre-order no, anywhere. But Walmart. hold on, they're a hundred dollars a piece. So yeah. if you want two racers, you got to spend two. When are they going to go for pre-order? I, I like I know Amazon has had a pre-order page for them, but like if I look up Mario Kart AR on Best Buy right now. They don't... Oh, look at that. They do have them on the site. When did these go live? Are the pre-orders up on Best Buy? 
Yeah, yeah they were. They were. The Best Buy has a coming soon page for them. I don't oh, know if that wow. means they just never went live, or if Best Buy is just like, we're not risking this. This is too close to launch. Maybe they're all scared by stock and how close it is, though. I mean, it, look at the original of basically anything except Lavo that was kind of weird, weird. for Nintendo to, to release because Ring Fit did it. Um, and we Fit several had problems. Amiibo did and... it. We, yeah. The we did it. <laughs> like, I, I can't say that it's surprising then walmart's really the only place i've heard that these went live but i also guess i wouldn't be surprised if i just somehow missed it along with everyone else uh, I... nintendo please <laughs> now that i have the money for it anyways yeah man i feel that too much money go to ps5 too much money go to nothing just books Mm-hmm. Not enough money go to nothing. Yes, dude. I spent almost two hundred dollars on books because they finally charged us. Gross. Well, um, so that was the podcast episode of September thirtieth. We thank you guys yeah. so much for watching or not watching for listening. Sorry, I'm smooth brain today. Um appreciate yeah. the the listen as always um follow us on twitter at all night gamers check us out on youtube stormwind games um if you don't like listening to us wherever you listen to us now we're available on our rss feed as well as spotify and apple Podcasts, and we are working on expanding that to some other places as well um, we're also on the youtube channel now um so you can go check us out there um we appreciate it as always, and we'll see you guys next week for more of the latest video game rants and rumors. Thank you guys. All right. Bye. See ya. See ya.